And now, the Android Basics segment. This is a segment where we discuss the things that power your device from behind the scenes. And now, here's this week's episode, Android Basics. Let's move on then to our Android Basics section. And we conclude our look at uh, One UI settings in the Samsung operating system. And John shows us a deceptively important bit of settings, I think, which is about phone. Welcome back to yet another installment of Samsung's One UI settings. Today, I will be exploring about phone status, legal information, phone name, which you can find at the very bottom of the settings on your Samsung phone. It's the last option in here. About phone. Navigate up. Button. I'm just going to show you some of the stuff that you can find in here. Search settings. Button. John Z Fold 6. First, we have the name of your device. Edit phone name. Button. Which you can choose to change if you want to. Product name. Galaxy Z Fold 6. As the model. Model name. SMF956U1. The model number. Serial number. You can find your serial number. Is M1. Then you have sections for each SIM. I just have an eSIM in here, so eSIM1. Phone number. You can find the phone number for your device. Network. Network information. Network. US Mobile. IMEI 1. And this will tell you the IMEI number that's associated with that eSIM. And I'm not going to do it here, but if I were to swipe right, it would give me the IMEI number. And if I were to double tap and hold on the number, it will automatically copy it to the clipboard. So if you need to provide your IMEI number for activation or something that's a quick way to get to it and put it in your clipboard available sim and this is the sim that is not in use imei2 you can get the imei number for that as well and then after this basic information you have a list of a few more types of information you can explore the first one is status information going in here Status information. Navigate up. Button. Now I'm just going to go through this quickly just to show you the type of items that are in here. SIM card status. IMEI information. IP address. Wi-Fi MAC address. Phone Wi-Fi MAC address. Bluetooth address. Ethernet MAC address. Serial number. Uptime. Phone status. FCC certification. Rated. DC 9V 2.77 Ampere. Now backing out of here. About phone. Status information. Next we have. Legal information. Again, quickly, I'll just blow through this to show you what's in here. Legal information. Navigate up. Button. Open source licenses. Google Legal. Google Play System Update Licenses. System WebView Licenses. Privacy Policy. Samsung Knox Privacy Policy, Samsung Legal, Samsung Legal Document Versions, End User License Agreement, Privacy Policy, Diagnostic Data, You Agreed to These Versions. So there's that information if you want to access it. About Phone, Legal Information. Below Legal Information we have Software Information. Let's go in here. Software Information. Navigate Up. Button. One UI version. 6.1.1. You can find your One UI version. Android version. 14. Android version and so on. Google Play System Update. April 1st, 2024. Baseband version. F956U1 was 1XHB. Kernel version. 6.1.57 Android 14 minus 11 29 million 150 thousand 220 ABF 956 SQS 1 XHB. 
Number 1 Wet August 28 72841 UTC 2024 Exciting stuff in here. Build number. Up 1 A231005.007.F956 U1 was 1 XHB. Android Security Patch Level. September 1st, 2024. So that's the type of information you can get in here backing out. About phone. Software information. Next we have. Battery information. Let's see what type of information this will tell us. Battery information. Navigate up. Button. Battery status. Charging. USB. Battery level. 87%. Now that's just the actual level, it's not battery health. Battery capacity. 4,400 mAh typical. The typical capacity has been tested under third-party laboratory conditions. The typical capacity is the estimated average capacity considering the deviation in battery capacity among the battery samples tested under the IEC 61960 standard. The rated capacity is 4,273 mAh. Actual battery life may vary depending on network environment, usage patterns, and other factors. And that's all we have here in the battery section. Backing out, we have one more item. About phone. Battery information. Below this is... Samsung Care Plus not covered. 39 days left to sign up. And obviously this is trying to get me to sign up for Samsung Care. I don't know if this will continue to show up in this list even after it's too late for me to sign up. But that's where you would go to sign up if you want to. And that brings us to the end of the About Phone section. I'll now send it back to the crew. Does anyone want to pick anything up about About Phone? I just want to mention something which is related to the software information, uh, which John didn't mention. Um, the Google Play system updates, uh, people should go there and uh, check for updates. And I noticed that uh, John's, uh, of the, uh, the John's version is very old, so he, it seems that he doesn't check at all for updates there. So uh, you should just uh, tap this, and if there is an update, uh, it should uh, appear for you, and then uh, it will ask you to restart the phone uh, because this part of update is also important uh, because it updates some uh, parts of this software. So it's always important to keep it up to date. And also it, it includes, it should include the uh, Google Play services stuff. So yeah, it's, it's a good thing to uh, always go there and download and install the updates that you have. I think another thing, being the historian that I am, that I like about the uh, that software information, uh, when you go in there, there's a menu, and if you tap on that, you can look at the past history, you know, the updates, and see what was changed, and all of that. And I, I thought that was fascinating. I've never been in there, but apart from that, I think the one thing that I like uh, also, you know, that I am EI, and I don't know why, you know, sometimes. Uh, when you want to migrate to another uh, phone carrier, they want you to give them that I IMEI. And I've, I've always been kind of a little bit hesitant about that. I know when I moved to US Mobile like a month or a little over a month ago, and they wanted that, and I had to call them. And I'm like, you know, you guys already have these phones on your network. So why, why do I need to give you that? I don't feel... Like, it, you know, if I must, then I'm not going to use you guys. So they just said, okay, so they allow me to, <laughs> just, uh, you know, sign on. But I just don't, it kind of bothers me. Why do you want my IMEI? It's not your phone. It, it's mine. Uh, you know, you already have similar phones on the network that, you know, work well. You don't need my IMEI. It's like you're trying to get my social security number. Uh, stop it. There they want it so they can see if it's been blacklisted or not. So if it's a stolen phone or something. Uh, nonsense. Yeah, that's what uh, I, see. Yeah, that's what I, that I was going to say the same thing. Uh, come on. Uh, yeah, so, and you uh, have to give it to them every time. Even when you transfer your eSIM, you have to give it to them. Yeah, so I, I argued with them, and they, they sent me, uh, you know, a, an eSIM code, and I just, uh, that's how I got in. 
What's quite funny though is you don't seem to need to do it. Well, maybe it's a bit easier to get a physical sim in the UK, but you can just like buy a physical sim from a grocery store, and then you don't give your IMEI to anybody. You just put your sim in the phone. Uh, it only seems yeah, to be but it's not whether you whether you give it to them or or not. When you when you yeah. actually put the sim in your phone or you activate the eSIM, like it, it's still they're still going to get the number and they'll still know check if it's been blacklisted and it won't yeah. work. So yeah, I mean, still... you're you're giving it to them eventually. It's just are you. Telling it to them, yeah. or are you letting your phone deliver it to them once you activate yeah. the SIM card? Yeah. So in, in some ways, they should just said... make it more efficient and don't make you tell them. Like, just do it when you activate the phone, and if it doesn't work, block it. Uh, uh, my yeah, thing is I that agree. the damn phone is not your phone; it's mine. Okay. <laughs> so, but I can see, you know, well, if someone has stolen the phone somewhere, but if someone has stolen the phone, uh, you know, it would be blacklisted anyway. So. Whether I give it to you or not, it's not going to be activated anyway because I, I think that thing would be blacklisted across uh, whatever. So anyone tries to activate it, this red flag is going to come on. And so what's the point? You know what I mean? Uh, but I, I can see where, where they're coming from. But I just kind of feel like, you know, you go to apply for something that is not job related and someone wants your social security number. I'd always argued that point. I'm like, why do, I, why do you need my social security number? You know, it's just kind of stupid. You know, this is why we have all these, you know, breaches and all of that. And uh, people's uh, social security numbers, you know, get stolen because everybody wants your social security number. It's The whole thing is stupid. But that's my rant. Another thing I like about it, though, you know, you see all those uh, IP addresses and then you you see the uh, Ethernet. And I'm like, well, the Ethernet, I don't even have an Ethernet port. And it says it's disabled. <laughs> oh, my goodness. But this is the brands of our phone, right? You want to know everything about your phone, you know, appropriately uh, titled about phone. This is where you go to... Uh, see everything that there is to learn about your phone, whether you want to turn on the developer mode on, uh, you go in here. So it's a very important segment of the phone. I'd like to see it expand a little bit. Like we've talked before, haven't we, about third party apps you need to install to get more phone information. So I wonder if some of that should be dumped natively into about phone now you might say it could get a bit cluttered for a beginner user but no beginner user is going to go in here anyway are they realistically so why don't why don't phone manufacturers put in all the stuff that third-party apps can expose anyway into about phone because the truth is that most of these people think we're so stupid, we're going to mess up the phone. You remember the argument about SD card, why we don't need SD card is because we don't understand the differences between an internal and SD card slots or, you know, what storage is what. And so we don't want you guys, little uh, siblings of ours out there, you know, getting confused. So it's important that we don't get you confused. So I'm thinking... They think we're going to mess up the phone <laughs> if they allow us to have access to this. Because you you know all those secret codes that you could dial, you know, star pound, whatever different things, and so many things would show up. It's not like you can go look on your phone to find those, but if you punch those codes in, you'll see all sorts of things that one can do, but they keep those away from us. We're not grown up enough. We can turn on developer options. I, I was more thinking, do you remember when we looked at the Braille Sense 6 and we wanted to know what processor it ran and it wouldn't tell us, so we put an app <laughs> on it. Wasn't that something, though? And we had to find yeah. a walk around. So, like, why isn't that? Yeah, why isn't that in about phone? Like, that, that, that sort of information should be in about phone, shouldn't it? It should be, but like I said, they think we're not. You know, we're not smart enough and we'll be messing up the phone. And so, and that's why, look at the developer options. You know, it's just those of us who are Android enthusiasts that we know about this. The average Joe doesn't know that you need to type that yeah. build number several times to uh, get to, you know, enable that developer option. So it's one of those things. Yeah. Uh, but a lot of what I want is just essentially static text. I don't want to be able to change it. I just want to know things that they could put in here uh, to save me having to install an app, which will do it because they don't close it. I, ju I just think they should. 
be a lot easier. A bit like the Windows system information thing, where you can find out quite helpful things. I don't know why it's not in the about phone. You may be interested in what's next in Android Basics now that we have finished One UI settings. Now, John has shouldered a heavy load to bring us all that, so he's going to get a break. And Warren, instead, is going to demonstrate the settings of John. He's going to show us what happens when you pull John's cheeks, ruffle his hair, pull his hair, and various other things you can do with the dyer. Look forward to that over the coming weeks. Well, I'll be. Uh, did you guys <laughs> understand uh, the stuff that uh, the knuckleheaded, uh, <laughs> knuckleheaded Ed just said? You know, I, I think it, it, it was German. Uh, you know, <laughs> living in, in <laughs> Berlin for yeah, so many years. I understood yeah. it. Yeah, <laughs> you did. <laughs> yeah, just Ed being Ed. <laughs> he didn't. He didn't like it, but he understood it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Not I that he liked. I it. didn't like it. I wasn't surprised <laughs> by it. But I understood it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, brother! It's Ed. What can you say? <laughs> <laughs> I might apply yeah. for a job at one cafe. Yeah. But seriously, we really appreciate <laughs> John for uh, bringing us these preambles. Uh, throughout our journey on the One UI settings. And uh, it's a good place to conclude the One UI settings. And it's been fun um, talking about the One UI settings. Of course, these things change. And when there's some new changes, we're bound to reflect those changes because nothing is static. And, you know, I mean, so uh, we'll be, you know, uh, doing this again should new things happen, especially uh, if something brings us a One UI 7X. So we'll see what happens with that new iteration. So uh, stay tuned. If any new changes come through, we could either do it as a tip of the week or something else. But it's been a great journey through the One UI settings.